And shalom, shalom, chavarim, shalom. So is the Bible myth or reality or something else? Is it a mixed reality? The Bible, myth or reality? There's some who propose that the Bible is all myth, it's all metaphor, it's all metaphysical. But the root of metaphysical is a five cycle, is a physical. But what about the Bible? Is it myth or reality? Very interesting question and in social media is really pushing, you know, that so the Bible's all myth and mythology. I'm not into mythology, I'm into reality. But yet if we study ancient civilizations, even we talk about ancient Egypt or some refer and prefer Kemet, right? Mitzrayim, ancient Hekapata, we find that they had a lot of myths or what we can call mythology, right? But yet they build a great civilization. And many of the ancient civilizations that still even modern people for all their science and reality, there's still a lot of unanswered questions. And there's a lot of false and, and speculations and theories that haven't panned out. You know, sounds like a lot of scientific myths as well. Not that science is a myth. I don't want you to get it twisted. We're talking about knowledge here. What do we know and what can we prove, right? Because something is real, Right? Doesn't mean that mythology does not exist in reality. Mythology does exist in mythology. That's the fact of the matter. Now, we went into the etymology, the breakdown of myth, because a lot of folks, you know, with Western Gentile public miseducation have actually been misled about what words really, really mean. And this is why the world is degenerating, right? Devolving instead of truly evolving. People talk about evolving, but some who know these truths who know how to use this whole myth versus reality thing, right? So the Bible, the scriptures, right? Some believe that it's literally, right, true, right? Others believe that it's true, right? But in a reality, mythology, mixed reality, how mythology, what is a myth, right? A story, a narrative. Have you noticed how easily even the so-called slavery narrative has been rewritten. See, we know more about it and we can engage with it right now with social media. So when we find out, oh, they're actually trying to change the narrative of slavery. So what you and me and many of us actually know from our family and from you know research prior to this um, so-called social media age as reality is being rewritten to be mythology, and this mythology, a new narrative, is now being put forward to be the reality. Mm. You see how it goes, myth and reality? So slavery, right, or the enslavement, the once lost, now found black and brown people, the Bait Yisrael, we the Beta Israel of the West, in the Americas and the Caribbean, Caribbean, the Trans-Ethiopian Ocean. See, it was the Ethiopian Ocean back then. But you see how that was the reality then, but now we talk about it, people try to make it seem like it's a mythology, right? We show, you know, evidence, proof, maps, you know what I mean? Written writings from the time and say, oh, well, those people didn't know they were. So even they were living their experience and testifying to what they were going through. And because you can't so-called believe it now, you have an experience it now, or because of some other mm, subjective reason, you do not want to accept the truth of the matter. You say, oh, that's just a myth, that's just a myth. So it becomes an easy kind of a catch-all escapism, right, for those who are trying to escape the reality of myth and mythology. So is the Bible real, right, or is it a myth? My, or do myths, if we get to the true meaning of myth, the most interesting thing about the whole word myth, right, that we found out, right, the, is that how it all changed the meaning of words, how they've changed the meaning of words. Now, this is some high magic. You talk about magic, you talk about sorcery, you talk about witchcraft or divination, or people talk about obia, voodoo, or so-called African, you know, spiritualities, you know, in the Western Gentile, woo, 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 right? But, you know, the real so-called witchcraft or Babylon bitchcraft 
is what they do with words, the grimoire, the grammar, how they change up the meaning of words. So if you're reading an older book that was written a couple of hundred years ago, right? Based on your understanding of a word today, you're going to be misconstruing what was actually said back then because they changed the whole meaning of the word. In the beginning was the uh, word, right? And the word was with and the word was, right? But now what happens when the word gets changed? They change the meaning of words. So most folks are not even working with the true science or the true knowledge of the word myth. They don't understand the duality, to say the least, of the word myth. How myth one time was a symbolic story, a symbolic narrative to explain a reality, right? That was beyond, you know, the ability to simply articulate, right? Some things are beyond, you know, the experiences that we experience and we know we go through things. You ever try to explain to somebody something that you actually for real, for real went through and they make it seem like what you really, really went through was a myth because they haven't experienced it until they experience it, and when they experience it, they're like, oh, 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 you know what you were saying? Oh, I agree. Oh, why, why are you so um, animated now, right? Passionate to agree. Huh? Because I experienced it. You see how that subjective thing goes on? So a lot of what we are looking at, we have to look at it from the perspective and know what the perspective that we're looking at it is from. See, is it from our subjective experience or objectively? Objectively speaking. Objectively speaking, what they call myth today, right, was an expression, right, of reality, right, that gets lost in translation. Often these things get lost in translation. You'd be, you'd be surprised how much many ancient things that people think is just some mythology or whatnot like that, that ones who have studied it have even found scientific. They reverse engineer a lot of ancient myths. But see, these things are heavily, highly guarded secrets, you know, and then they, how can I say, they mock the ignoramus public, right? Because then the public is caught up on, you know, some entertainment. They want to be entertained, Right? They want their, how can I say, their creature comforts, so to speak. You know, they want to get a good, you know, people like science fiction and all of that, rah, 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 rah. And then how they mix that with so called pseudo scientific facts, you know, and then it gets blurred and everything. You know, there's a lot of mythology even in things that we are led and made to believe as science until we really study it and know it for ourselves. And then when we study and we know for ourselves, we recognize that even the scientists express faith or belief. Science, you know, belief, what is belief? What, what, what is faith? I, I, cred I don't know this, but based on what I do know, right, you know, I can suggest or speculate that this too must be true. If this is true like this, based on what I do know, right, what's, what's in my realm and range of knowing, this may be true too. Now, what has to happen? Well, if possible, some sort of experiment, right? But some things, it's hard to really like experiment, right, on some historical things that already have happened, Right? And there's many things that have been debunked as not being historical. And then a little bit later on, you know, as others are able to study and even recover other things, you know, because certain evidence has not been found, right, that substantiate things. Because those things that was not believed to be true, those places that were in ancient writings that they call mythological, and they say, oh, this cannot be true, you know, and they looked for it maybe in the wrong place. They didn't find it in the wrong place. And then they begin to find it in the right place, you know, later on. And they say, oh, we have to, we have to totally rewrite the books, right? The historical books, the history books have to be rewritten. Why? Because we found this. We, now we know that it really is true, right? And even those people who were so hard against it, well, we're going to give them a pass. Even though people was telling them then that there's probably other things that will be recovered. So let's just work with what we, you know, what we know, right? Let's not dismiss it since other things in many of those same mythologies have been proven to be true, right? So like the lack of, you know, it's a lack of evidence, right? You know, the lack of evidence doesn't mean that, you know, there is that thing doesn't really exist or that thing didn't really happen because we don't have the evidence right now. You know how evidence is. Like even in crimes, they look for who done it. 
right? And therefore, when they find certain evidence, they say, this person must have done it. That person is pleading their innocence. And it's telling them this one, this, that. You know, that sounds like a myth. That sounds like a story. And then some other fact or factor comes to view. Now, of course, when watching the movies, it's like exciting, like, whoa, you know what I mean? You know, before the hour was up, you know, they found the, they found the real criminal. <laughs> but reality is not like that. You see, so, so we watch those things and those things really appear real. And sometimes even those myths, I'm talking about fictional stories, dramas, movies are all based on some levels of truth and fact and reality. But then it's put forward by right, in a convenient hour, two hours or series right, to make you believe. Right? And, and also entertain you and enjoy it. Look at the, the fact that myth versus reality exists in many different scenarios, not just the whole biblical scenario. Right? And here, let's go over here. Let's go right here and let's zoom in on this right here. Okay, myth versus reality. For example, let's take a couple of these right here, just as an example. But think about what I'm saying about how the whole narrative of black people, right? Black peoples in the Americas and the Caribbean who we know were enslaved or enslaved. Right. We know that the Southern Atlantic was called the Ethiopian Ocean during that time period, especially the early time period of enslavement from the east. I mean, from west, from West Africa, you know, from the west of Africa over here to the eastern, you know, the eastern seaboard of the Americas and also to the Caribbean, you know, America and also you know, North and South America, when we say the Americas, we're including all of that right there. You know, now they're trying to say, well, they're trying to rewrite a narrative of, of the enslavement of our people and try to say that, well, it was like immigrant. They're trying to make it like the immigrant issue, right? The immigrant issue. Because first of all, like I've been saying over and over, it's that word Slav, Slav. They make you pronounce that slave, but it's Slav from Slavic people. That terminology right there is part of the grimoire, the grimoire, the magic they use right there. People don't understand how it's words shape reality. The words shape reality. Once again, words shape reality. But here with a myth, right, in digital marketing is that it's very easy to study. You, you probably have heard it. Just go and watch some videos on YouTube and so forth and so on. Well, you can learn some things. But the reality is that digital mar marketing, digital marketing is dynamic and needs a serious attention to grasp knowledge. This is the same thing with the Bible. Right? People say, well, Bible, I've read the Bible. I looked at the Bible. I went to church. My mama was, uh, was going, she was very religious. And my parents and my father, this person, that person, preacher, pastor, I, I grew up in the church, you know, or somebody, my family was very high up and, you know, and I learned everything from them. So I know about the Bible. So what they're trying to say is that the Bible, now when I say the Bible and some of the King James and the other versions that come after that, right, the King James version, but then when I speak about the Bible and the Hebrew Bible, right, we have to go back into those linguistics and most people don't have a grasp, as it says, serious attention to grasp knowledge. So before we become dismissive, this is the problem of ones and ones, you know what I mean? On certain media platforms. And also like, you know, the black conscious community, you know, brothers like the Sarnettas and others, you know, and some who may look at it more like the, like, um, um, what's his name? Uh, Mighty Hebrew. We're like the brother and what he presents. And I understand he's on that metaphysical grasp, right? And also there's been a lot of, um, how can I say, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant confusion that has been mixed you know it's like a mix that's what we call about a mixed reality but now i'm using the digital marketing as a as a um point of reference right to this discussion and reasoning on whether the bible's a myth right or is it reality right or is it a mixed reality when i say a mixed reality i'm saying how myth for us today is fiction, right? So myth today, since like the 1700s, they changed the definition. Let me say it again. They changed the meaning of words. Just as they're trying to change the narrative of black people, what we've gone through into a myth. I'm warning, warning, warning. See, a lot of people don't recognize how serious this is. And it was already going on from a while, since even 1865 them trying to change this whole reality because it was caught out there. 
You know, it's like so-called the inferiority, the inferiority, the inferiority posing as supremacy, so-called white supremacy. They were caught out there. Right. And they started to change things, little nuances. I don't know if you'll pick up on these things, but it takes serious attention. What's the price of the truth to pay attention? Most folks want to feel good. Right? Or get over a feel bad. Let's look at the second thing right here about myth and reality regarding digital marketing and why this is a comparison with the so-called, quote, Bible. Or at least what the Bible refers to. We're not, we're not um, landlocking ourselves into the KJV version. We're just pointing out the KJV, the King James version of the Bible, because that's the 400-year version of the Bible. They say they translate out many other languages, right? many ancient cultures and languages. Right? And we're also using ancient Egypt right as a point of reference or Kemet as a point of reference and, and Kemet what they be talking about right in their in their um paintings wall monuments so forth and so on is was that a myth or was that a reality right you see it's not so easy when you think about a great civilization that actually more or less believe that many of them the rulers the movers and shakers they believe that even the common people didn't oppose that. They didn't say, oh, Pharaoh, you're a son of the nature, the God. That's a myth. Can you imagine what would happen to them? But yet they built a great society that even today, ones are the modern scientists and realists are baffled to explain it. And even more baffled to prove many of their explanations. Myths. Key words and its ranking in most is most important in CEO, right? In CEO, keyword is important, but forget ranking. CEO is all about getting relevant traffic. CEO, right? Let's do this right here, 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 just to get this into context right here. Let's look up CEO. Let's look up CEO. Right and digital. Let's put it for digital. Okay, how are we spelling that? Digital marketing. There we go. It, it automatically. CEO. What is CEO? Search engine optimization. You know, we just want to check that out. We, we was going to throw that out there, but since it was not fully sure, we, we couldn't give it full credit. We only had a little bit of credit, a little bit of belief that what we thought was true. We said, let's look it up. All right, let's look it up. So social, uh, search engine optimization. So keyword and its ranking is most important. This is what we believe, the myth, right? But keywords is, is important. So even in the myth, it is true, but not true to the extreme. You, you, you see what's going on here? But forget ranking, right? Forget ranking. So notice this is keyword and its ranking. But in the reality of it is that the key word is important, but forget about the ranking because so search engine optimization is all about getting relevant, relevant traffic. So you see how the so-called myth of it, right? So even myths exist even in things that we talk about as reality today. S digital marketing fetches you high paying jobs instantly. You, you know, a lot of these myths have People have believed these things and they never thought for a moment, wait, I'm talking about the Bible here, but I can't, I don't even understand, I don't understand the myth that I'm, I'm dealing with. I, I think it's reality. The reality about it is that digital marketing do have high paying jobs. You, you see the connection? We, we, we can say that the Bible and teaching of the Bible um, gives you, it, it, it can save everybody. <laughs> but the truth about the matter is like with digital marketing, that it can save Right, the truth of the scripts can save some, but what? Just like with digital marketing, right? But you must have skills and expertise. Even the Bible says, study to show yourself approved. And don't mean study to show yourself approved in a translation of a translation of a translation, in that sense, or a translation that openly says it came from the Hebrew. How many folks are we talking all this and that about ancient Egypt even understand how to read the glyph? So even really seriously are trying. How about, how about the people of the Bible? One time preachers and pastors, this is the thing that surprised me when I started to do my own studies, you know, on previous generations of scholars in the Bible, so forth and so on, you know, from generation to generation. Got to recognize that many of these old time um, white Anglo-Saxon folk, right, into Christianity, you know, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant folks, that many of them were studying Hebrew and they were studying Greek. You know what I mean? 
back in those days, let's say maybe say 100, 200, as we keep going back like that, they were studying these things. And now you got a lot of guys and gals in the pulpit, right, who barely even know the language that they're communicating in rather well. They're charismatic now. They, they do a good preach. You know what I mean? They're very entertaining, but they don't have the real skills and expertise. But because the people are so dumbed down, they only are expecting entertainment. Sounds familiar for what I was saying earlier about the entertainment, right? Social media. Oh, note this too, that a lot of these new slave narrative, black slavery narrative movies, they're buying into this change of narrative. And once you change the narrative of the enslavement of the once lost, now found black and brown people, the beta Israel, black people in America and the Caribbean, you change the narrative. The narrative, the original narrative is based on reality. By changing that narrative is they're creating a mythology. And many people are being made to believe and make believing that, right? So even that's more, um, um, uh, what's his, uh, <laughs> the word is slipping me. Um, I was about to say pernicious, you know, that's, that's more dangerous. Let me just say it like that. That's more dangerous, right? In more ways than one, right? Social media marketing. So you see how the, the, the connection. So even in the myth, there's some truth in the myth, right? Right, but how it has been mythologicalized, so to speak. Not just the Bible, but we're talking about digital marketing as a comparison. Social media marketing is cool and enjoyable subject. Social media marketing is a challenging subject. But see, even both of these things are true. It is true that social marketing is cool and enjoyable subject for those people who are subject to it, if you get what I'm saying. But social marketing is a challenging subject why? To people who approach it from an objective perspective, you know, like the movers and the shakers and, and, and the real, how can you say, the real operatives, you know, those who are, who are operatives. Let, let's go up here right here. Let, let, let's bring this up right here. Okay. One more, one or two more. Okay. I think we got, I think we got, actually, we got this one more down here. I think we're almost at the bottom, right? Okay. Digital marketing skills. We have are good enough, right? Truth, of, it's like telling the people about the Bible because you can read the King James Version of the Bible for yourself. That's good enough for you to know the truth. Nah, it says study, right? Digital marketing is ever growing and ever changing. If you really are studying the Bible from the real perspective, the first of all, you're going to get past the web page. You're going to get to the source code. You're going to have to get into the Hebrew, right? And then as you get into that, you'll find that just like with digital marketing, you are growing because it is growing. And, and when, it says, when we say it's changing, it changes because once I recognize that this English translation here was maybe good to give one a general view, but the level of knowledge that I want to get in reality is going to now cause me to have to grow and have to change some of my perceptions my, about what I got like at the first grade. Some people stay stuck in first grade. Right? Skills and its application. Skills and its application both needs a brush up occasionally. Like I was mentioned to one studying Kemet, right? And studying ancient Egypt and studying in comparative studies. I found out that a lot of the Egyptologists, right? A lot of them don't really have very good, right? Um, knowledge of the language. It's like a lot of consensus, like almost like people get into this profession before you had people who were really seekers. So if they had to learn another language or learn a dialect or learn something, they would learn it. Some had to learn things like Arabic and maybe Hebrew and, and even Ge'ez or Ethiopic in order to be able to understand other things. I'm talking about the prior scholars who set up the whole foundation. And then you get others that come into it almost like fans, right? They become fanatics about it, right? While the other people were highly motivated, but they, like this reality that went in purple, they were growing. They were changing. They had, to, they had to look at their skills, right? And also the application. They had to brush up on it. Lastly, but not leastly, to generate leads, go for paid campaigns, right? Now, um, good SEO and SMO also generates leads, right? Search engine optimization, you know, social media, yeah, right? Also generates leads. All right, so that's one example. Now, debunking myths, right? We should also talk about debunking reality. So you can't debunk reality because it, it, it is what it is. Well, 
Yes, it is what it is, but to you, what is it? It is what it is. The reality is what it is, but what is reality to you? Right? Because a lot of people's reality, mine, is basically mythology. A lot of people's reality is mythology because the system even creates that. See, when we talk about ancient Egypt, how they had, you know, their religion or their, people say they, they go against the religion, so it was a way of life, so and so on. But they, there was things that, that the priests and the scribes controlled everything. You have to understand the importance of the priests and the scribes. Like Yeshua HaMoshiach Robeinu, I will rabbi, 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 black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, as he reproved the scribes and Pharisees, they were the keeper of the keys. Who were the keeper of the keys in ancient Egypt? You know what I'm saying? They were the scribes and the priests. And we're not saying that all scribes and priests are bad or religious folks are bad, but sometimes when the people can't keep them in check, you see, and see, people don't understand really how this thing is really operating behind the scenes, right? So now they say, well, you know, slavery, you know, slavery was about, it was about um, immigration. They were looking for work. I, I heard this. People are actually saying that the enslavement of our ancestors is because they didn't have jobs or whatever in so-called Africa, West Africa, wherever from, you know, mainly from West Africa that they brought our people from. Right. And that we came over here because we was looking for better opportunities, you know, and likening what we went through, actually watering it down, actually distorting it, actually mythologicalizing it in the worst way, mythologicalizing our reality. Now, some levels of the way we put forward our own reality might seem somewhat, quote, mythological when we put it in the context of ancient cultures. See, ancient cultures their mythology didn't stop them from dealing with reality and even doing some things in reality that people, because they're trying to say it's all mythology and they don't understand that what the mythology was to them. See, what the mythology was to them is not what mythology has become to us, what we've made to believe since the 1700s. I keep saying that, and some people know what I'm talking about. I touched on this in an earlier video, not to really go there, but how the whole meaning of, you know what? We are going to go there. For this particular vlog, let's just go here. Because we just want to sum this up right here, at least to put down some. So myth, let's look at etymology, right? Let's look at etymology, the myth etymology. Let's go here very quickly. Myth etymology, okay? Here's the word right myth. here. Myth. Okay, go, go, come again. Myth. Okay, myth. Mutos, mutos, from mu mythos, myth, right? Here they say right here, okay, they, they, they lead you in circles right there a little bit, right? But let's go down here, okay, it's already highlighted from before. You see what it says, myth and now, 1830s, from the French myth, 1818, and directly from the modern Latin, mythos, from Greek, mythos, means speech, thought, word, discourse, conversation. In the beginning was the word, a narrative. If I narrate to you something that really happened to me because I'm narrating it and it technically can be called a myth, are you going to say it's not true? Hmm. Hopefully what I'm narrating is not really good for you because you dismiss that and you know what you're going to get. Speech, thought, word, discourse, conversation, story, saga, tale, myth, anything delivered by word of mouth. So all these people talking about myths, the Bible's a myth. How are they delivering it to us? By word of mouth. So we're going to just dismiss all of that. See, we have to understand the context here, right? Quite possibly pre-Greek. But let's go down here, right here. It says right here, this is the good one. Why do you have it so light? Myths, they say, are, quote, stories about divine beings. This is not one definition. This is how one scholar defined it. And so we separate what the word really means and then how people, like, want to make you believe it. Like, I tell you, well, this word really means that. So you see all these meanings. Now you need someone maybe to bring it all together. So I give you like a, a story. Like so right now we're getting a story about myths, ancient words, thoughts, um, words of mouth, stories. Stories about divine beings arranged generally in a coherent system. They are revered, or we say were revered as true and sacred. They are endorsed by rulers and priests. Think about ancient Egypt and the Bible, and closely linked to what we call today as religion. Once this link is broken, the actors in the story are not regarded as God. So, so notice what happened. 
ancient Egypt, look how they look at, look, have looked at ancient Kemet and ancient Egypt. You know what I'm saying? Because the people who were looking at it were not, you know, part of that context. So the link was broken. See, the real link is between them. This is why they always try to say that ancient Egypt is not a black African. It's not a, it's not an Ethiopian. It's not a black people culture. They try to say the same thing about the Bible. The Bible is not a black African, you know, culture. The Hebrews are not African related peoples. You see, because they want to break the link. Because once this link, what you think, me thinks, once the link is broken and the actors in the story are not regarded as gods or not regarded as divine, but as human heroes, giants, or fairies. So this, a lot of this confusion is, is, is Babylon, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant Tism, schism, counterfeit Christianity, when the times of the Gentiles, the inferiority posing as supremacy. It is no longer than when all these things have happened, a myth in the ancient sense of myth, but a so-called folk tale. This is what the people just tell themselves, right? You mean like the Mayflower, like, you know, Plymouth Rock, you mean like, like that? Where the, where the central actor is divine, but the story is trivial. The result is religious legend and not myth. So in J. Simpson and S. Rood, right, Dictionary of English Folklore, Oxford 20, uh, 2000, page 254, he brings out something very good here, right? We're on Etim Online, right? Just bringing out right here. Now, notice this right here. The general sense of untrue story, rumor, imaginary, or fictitious object or individual, this meaning of myth or this, um, how can I say, recontextualization of myth, let's bring that out right there, right, is from the 1840s. I, I was saying the 1700s, actually. So I was, I, was, I was in error there. Actually, it was a little bit later than that, from 1840. So that means roughly after like 1800, say after 1840, when the word myth came up in writing, Right, it was then the connotated, the con game came in. So when they wrote up something that was a myth, this was implied. This was to make you believe that it was an untrue story, that was a rumor, that was imaginary, it, or a fictitious object or individual. This, this, um, this, um, well, when I say the sense, this, this, this miss sense is a miss sense, like a, like, like, like it's. Miseducation is, is a connotation. It's a con game. It's not based on what the word actually means or how in the very ancient times coming up to this time, how the word was used. This is why we say that the, the J. Simpson and S. Rood, right, Dictionary of English Folklore is a very good point of um, reference when they say once this link is broken, so with white so-called European people going to other people, non-so-called white European people's culture like ancient Egypt and ancient Bible and all of this, it's very easy because they don't have any link to it. It's like somebody talking, you write, you write down your family history and somebody say, wow, all this could not have happened. And because they can't feel it. You know what I mean? Because you feel me? They can't feel it. They're going to say, oh, this is made up. That's what they've been doing with the whole slave, black enslavement in the Americas and the Caribbean narrative. Right? That's why, you know, politically speaking, big up. You know, we have to big up. Big up ADOS. Right? Big up FBA. Right? And what ones like Tariq Nasheed are doing with that because it's an important point. Right? A important point of order in the conversation and in the reasonment when we talk about myth and reality, right? And what it really means, Habarim. Let's move forward right here. Debunking myths. We're going to hopefully follow with debunking so-called reality, debunking reality, or what you may be to believe as reality. Now, in the myth column, those who leave are just bitter and angry. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Somebody like even Sarnetta and one to one the black consciousness, if you don't agree with them, well, you're just bitter and angry, something wrong with you. But the reality is that some may be, some that may be that, that leave or don't check for you, bitter and angry. Or even with us, somebody may not like something, they used to like it, what? That might be true. But many others simply might want more than ultra-orthodoxy can offer. 
Then ultra, you see what it says, ultra, ultra. That means not just orthodox, but you, you, you're you trying too hard. You're trying to be like holier than thou, right? May offer that, that limitation, all right? So if somebody sometimes check out our channel and sometimes go to other channels, maybe another channel or another so-called YouTuber presenter is offering something more, right, or even along this subject matter than what we have offered, or maybe we will offer. It all depends on what it is. Maybe we haven't gotten around to that subject matter. So you see how the, the myth of it is that well, all of those who leave, right? See, this I think is in a, a Yehudi, a Jewish context. A lot of Jews who have become more secular, you know, secular Jews. You know, that there's the Haredi, the Chiloni, the Da'ati, right? They may be just bitter and angry, but some of them may be. So you see how the difference between the myth and the reality is that sometimes in what they call the myth, it's not saying that there's no truth in that myth, right? But sometimes one's, for example, the ultra-Orthodox, right? Say the ultra-Orthodox, they might limit their presentation to what their presentation about the Bible is. But then if one can read and study and know the truth for themselves, you can see beyond my beyond what they are presenting. So this is what's happened even with Christianities, counterfeit Christianities, and the whole Bible, Bible thing, right? So both a myth is real, and of course, reality is real. Myth exists in reality, and myths exist because of reality. Now, not all myths are, are equal. I'm not gonna say that all myths are necessarily equal, like more of the ancient myths, Right? had more, I would say, more of something in common because we have ancient cultures that almost fully ascribe to this more or less. That was a point of reference. Those were unitary things. Like talking about the history of America, 1776, Independence Day, Plymouth Rock, Christopher Columbus discovered America, but actually he didn't. <laughs> actually he didn't according to what they call the facts, right? So myth reality, right? Don't dismiss, like don't cut off your nose to spite your face, you know what they used to say, right? Don't cut off your nose to spite your face. First of all, right, learn the truth about these terms. In other words, learn the, learn the etymology about myth, what's the truth about myth, and how ancient cultures built my, based on these unifying narratives. Now, I'm not saying that the unifying narratives were, were, were real my, in some of its um, expressions. My, like if I, say, if I say to a woman, I say, baby, I'll give you the world. My, can I really give her the world? Are we going to be literalists now? Are we going to be literalists now? We don't understand what it means? You know, you, you, you're, you're beautiful like a rose. My, I'm saying a woman's beautiful. Like, is she really like, is she a rose? Somebody could take objection with that in reality. That means they do not overstand the spirit, right, of the world. They are carnal-minded. We're talking about carnal, fleshy-minded. We can almost say twice dead in that sense. So the reality is that it's a mixed reality. That's the reality of the matter. The reality is that there's a mixed reality, right? A mixed reality. Now, I don't want to get into the Bible thing, but it's all that the knowledge of the, uh, the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, right? So if one might want to say that before the good and evil matrix of it, it was good and very good as in the first chapter, right? Now we come after that, have to deal with this mixed reality, sometimes happy, sometimes sad, you know, splashing, dashing, restless sea. Everything is not as it seems to be. Right? Even in reality, a lot of things are not as they seem to be. Right? And if we just be real with it. Right? But see, the definition brought forward by um, that dictionary you know, of English folklore was very good. Once the link is broken. Well, we had other people looking at other people's ancient culture. Right? Who, who basically have no connection to that ancient culture. Notice how the white man, the Europeans, were looking up and down in Egypt and everywhere. What was he looking for? He's trying to find himself. And he's coming across all these ancient, we could say, melanated cultures, black peoples, like non-so-called white people, because the white man, in his inferiority posing as supremacy, he's the one that set this white-black paradigm. In other words, he was white, this chosen few, and everybody else was part of this this mix, this bag, 
So that's when we say the black and brown peoples. We're not just saying so-called African peoples, but including other peoples who were biased, right? And who were targeted, right? In the inferiority that poses as supremacy to create this mixed reality, right? Myths and facts, right? Myths and facts. See, it's another factor in the reality, mythos. Remember what we said the mythos means or what they say, what they say. It meant speech, thought, a speech, a thought, a word of mouth. So if somebody tells you, yo, what happened? Yo, such and such. I don't believe you. You're going to have to give me facts. What? I'm just telling you there's a fire. Whoa, 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 where's the fire? It's down in the basement. So we got to get out of here. I got to go down and see that there's a fire. Well, you know what? That person might not come out. <laughs> see, see, what I'm saying is at a certain point, right, we can't be like over. Like, like you know, in that last um, slide, it said ultra, right? So there's these ultra, right? You know, they're, they're being too much, you know? And this whole myth versus reality, trying to make a myth like it's fiction, this idea of a myth being fiction is a later day, like something untrue, is a later day idea, a later day concept. I did read another etymology of study, another etymology that did bring that out to the 1700s. I remember they said like a myth as fiction is actually a later day idea. This is like the heyday of what ones might refer to as the inferiority posing as supremacy, pseudo white supremacy. Right? Because that's a lie. Right? So here, 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 like when we say like the Holocaust and the New World, people try to make the Holocaust seem like it's a myth. Right? And we didn't get into particulars. Right? But notice this author here, the Holocaust and New World Slavery. Now, if you look at the narrative, they are trying to make it seem as though slavery of black and brown people in the America and the Caribbean wasn't as bad as we no, it was, as it has been recorded to be. And they're doing this in the social media age, but they were already doing this before we get to the social media age. So on one level, it's like the best of the best of times, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times as it as it be. Because we do have the social media, but it's happening right in our face. They say, oh, slavery, it was all about um, black people getting jobs. Black Africans getting jobs. They came to America looking for jobs. Right? They didn't have work. They were looking for food. I remember I heard one pastor, I know it was T.D. Jakes. He was preaching about this, and he was going through that. That He made it seem like it's just like immigration today that was coming. While the immigration today, by and large, is a different motive. They haven't proven that, well, black people might were coming over here of their own volition. And the white man says, OK, I help you out. I got some ships. I got the USS Jesus, you know, and some other ships. We're just going to load you up and we'll bring you over. Right. You're going to have to pay us back. You know, they try to make it like the coyote, what goes on in Mexico, you know, and other places. And that's that's a matter in and of itself. But they're trying to liberal the demon crazy the democrat they're trying this whole thing to blur the lines right because on one level they recognize the old narrative as true but because we are becoming more we're going past the so-called ultra orthodoxy of the democratic party and that mindset they say oh you're going to treat us like that so we're going to now use another group of people my, the, the, the Latino and the Hispanic community, we're going to use them, might bring millions of them in here, 40 something thousand up here in New York in a tent city. Wow, man. Some predict that there's a civil war coming, right? But now think about it, black folks. On a level, it was better when this was just a black and a white reality. Think about it, the Americas before 1960 was 65. Yeah. So myth and reality, right? So here's what I say, that if our black people, right, even those in the consciousness want to totally dismiss the Bible as just a book of myth, right, then they're going to have to also be as honest with ancient Egypt, that ancient Egypt was a bunch of myths. But check this out. That ancient culture believed in certain primary and basic, you say, mythology or, you know, symbolical stories, metaphorical stories, but they were able to build up a great advanced culture. 
The reason why people even question it is because the European, the so-called white man, he questions it. And he questions it because he can't give credit where credit is due. Plain and simple. The same thing with the Bible. Can't give credit where credit is due. All right? You see the Seder table, the Seder right there? Can't give credit where credit is due. So myth and reality, right? Very soon, right? And very soon, if it's not in the next generation, it's already affecting this generation here where people are beginning to, you know, question if it really, really happened. Now, when I say people, many black folks who recognize, black people, I think y'all can recognize what's going on, right? How they trying to change the whole narrative. Then that means what you and me can say and prove Right, they will, will, will based on the evidence. They're even dismissing historical evidence, right, concerning the enslavement of our people. They're trying to, you know, make the numbers seem like it was not so bad. It wasn't as bad. And I've noticed this historically, whenever the um, Anglo-American, right, um, movers and shakers, the Anglo-Americans, whenever they get kind of caught out and get a reverse, they do this. You remember what happened after the whole affirmative action, the Great Society of Johnson and all that, blah, 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 and black people started to, in the 70s and everything? What did the white man so-called do in America? He started to talk about reverse racism. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> he talked about reverse racism. And now, at first, many black folks laughed at all. But he kept pushing, and he kept pushing, he kept grinding, he kept presenting his argument in a thousand different ways. It's like death through a thousand cuts. Right? A thousand. This is what we have to do. What we do, brothers and sisters, if you overs. Right? A thousand cuts and everything. Right? And now even some black people are even like, yeah, well, you know, they, it can't be. We can be racist, too. They, they, they never read Francis Crest Welsing, Nilly Fuller Jr. They, they, they never studied these things. I guess they didn't. Or maybe some of us may have put these things out and others didn't continue to carry the ball, like that baton, that continue to grind on this. Issues that are important to, to others, right? They talk about it in a thousand different ways, right? But with us, right? With us, it's like we get satisfied that maybe one or two of us present this and then we kind of go to sleep. But what happens is, is, is um, we get overwhelmed. You know what I mean? We get overwhelmed. You know what I mean? It's almost like the death by a thousand cuts. Maybe you cut somebody one time, but if they keep stabbing you, stabbing you, stabbing you over and over. So some narratives, whenever they come with a new narrative, guess what? It keeps being put out there over and over in many different ways. They even started now to do movies, 12 Years a Slave and this and that. And yes, they're entertaining. I'm so happy that there's some of these black actors, you know, that they're able to have some of these um, roles and everything. You know, yeah, we like to see, you know, actors of our kind, of our, maybe even of our color, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, actors that we can identify, right, with in different things here and there. So the narrative is being changed, brothers and sisters, right? Soon they'll be saying that slavery was a myth. In fact, actually, some are already on the front line of that. They seem crazy to some of y'all, but they are basically they are basically leading the charge. You know, because they have to make these bold statements, you know, that people will be dismissing. Like some things that people are dismissed, and then when it becomes a so-called, quote, reality, when they're made to believe that's the reality. And sometimes they make ones believe that something's a reality by... by by, um, how can you say, eliminate the competition, you know, in order to just, just get rid of all the other information. And many of you know, sometimes you'll try to find some information, find some videos and other things that used to be out there on social media. Try to find these things now. If you didn't back them up, where are they? You recall seeing them. I'm hearing a lot of people say, I, oh, I, have you, do you have such and such? I saw this before. Do you have a copy of this? People are trying to find these things. Right? They're there, but they're like somewhere in deep, like a deep archive. Right? And then other things have been put out there. And people are saying, I saw this. It's not quite like that because you remember certain key points. But in this new version, it's like, like revision. Revi they call it revisionist history, so to speak. Well, revisionist history. Right? It all depends. Sometimes history. Who is, who is he? 
You know what I mean? If, if, if he is me and he refers to us, well, let's come, come, come. Come together. Let's discuss. But anyway, brothers and sisters, like, share, and subscribe. You know, like, share, and subscribe. Definitely share on your different social media platforms. You know, hit that notification bell so you'll be notified. If you hit it already, just go hit it, unhit it, and then re-hit it again as well. Because sometimes, you know, YouTube's be like that. And sometimes they want to shadow ban or do certain things to, you know, put us like, you know, off of the main, you know what I mean? It's that whole digital marketing. The myth versus reality, even right there. Be careful because soon and very soon, this that we know, right, has actually happened to our people. We have people in our family that have testified soon and very soon, right? They're going to be telling ones and ones that it's just a myth, especially if we don't archive. We have to do our due diligence. Think of why the ancient Egyptians and others and even the Hebrews and others wrote so much and had to write their own narrative. Because until you write your own narrative, well, the hunter is always going to be the hero.